how the devil are you? Welcome to WCS Europe Season 3, Round of 16, Group D, match number three. That's right. We've got MMA versus Duck Luck. Let's just check in with the, re with the brackets first. There we go. Nearly tripped over my own words there. MMA and Duck Duck through to the upper bracket final. And Starbuck and Titan, unfortunately, relegated down to the lower bracket. They're going to have to fight their way through two more matches if they want to claim their place in the round of eight. Sean's with me, Apollo. A um, little bit disappointing for the Europeans tonight. Let's just talk about those two first off. St Starbuck, we said earlier, young, naive, doesn't really know what it's like to be on this kind of stage, but coping with it absolutely fine. He seems to be in great spirits. He's got some good support here. It's a really good experience for him. Titan's got that experience, but wasn't able to take down Duck Duck, even though it was a close match in the end. Yeah, it was, it was a close match, and I think everyone expected it to be a close match. One of the big reasons why is Titan's a very good player. He's just never hit the point where people can say, oh, he did this in this tournament. Yeah, I remember him. He hasn't had that kind of remark yet, but he's getting closer and closer towards that. But when they play against each other, I spoke to Starbuck backstage and I said, how are you doing? I don't, you know, commiserations yeah. and whatnot. Uh, and he said, well, to be honest, I, I didn't really expect that much against MMA, but give me the Protoss players. Give me the Protoss players. And he said it in a very confident manner. So I think that game can be a good one. All right, okay, well, we'll look forward to that in just a moment. Let's turn our attention now to the winner's final. It's MMA versus Duck Duck. It's a good old Korean clash of styles, this one. MMA, of course, we know all about him. Triple crown winner. Uh, Duck Duck, previous season's champion. Really surprised a lot of people last year, uh, last season. But now he's not really known as the shocker. He's not really known as the surprise. We almost expected him to win his first game. So we've probably got the final we would have expected to have. Would that be fair? Yeah, I, I would say so. I think there was always going to be Titan could do it, but it was always more so Duck Duck will probably be able to win that game. OK, and then in terms of the, how the way these two match up, I mean, MMA, we always talk about him as the man that's always coming back to form. He, he always seems to be almost getting back there, but he's still not made it. I mean, is this is WCS Europe his absolute golden opportunity to prove that he's back to his very best again? Yes, is the very simple answer. <laughs> this is his tournament to win it. This is not a tournament that he's coming in to lose in the round of 16, to lose in the round of eight. He's come here to win it all. And I actually believe in him to, to win it all. So going through Duck Duck here, if he wants to be the winner, if he's worthy of first place, then this is nothing other than a 2-0 in his mind. Okay, and then Duck Duck, returning champion, we've said it before, no, no champion in any of the regions has ever been able to retain their title or even win a second one of the first three seasons that we've had of WCS so far. Saw Innovation go out this morning in, uh, in Korea as well, so he's lost his opportunity to win a, win a GSL this season. Is Duck, does Duck Duck have the depth of the builds and the, and the kind of game style that, that he had from season two? Does he have all of that as collective enough this season? to get to the final and win the whole thing again? I would say yes with luck. So not, it's not do, a complete yes. It's not do, like does, he's sorry, got a whole package. Need, do you think he needs more PVPs on the way? I mean, are we, am I sort of making him less than perhaps good that he was yes, last season? But I, I felt that he had, you know, yeah. had a, the draw was favorable for him in the yeah. way that it fell with PVP. Yeah, he, he's definitely very good in that matchup. He is weaker in the others. So obviously stuff like having a, a good draw in the round of eight if he was to make it there is a bit of luck. Being able to get an opponent he wants is a bit of luck. I don't think he can come into this tournament and say that he could 2-0 every single player here, but that's something I'd expect from MMA. I think Duck Duck now, even though he surprised a lot of people and there was a lot of doubt around him last season, the doubt's not completely gone away, but he's actually still a very much so contender for top four. If he's a contender for back-to-back, -back, that's another question. Okay, final question about Duck Duck. His third game was a lot of control. He was very controlled in his aggression. The, many players, me included, I'm sure, and maybe sometimes you as well, would have, would have seen that early, that early uh, mothership called go and thought, ah, oh, great, I can push now, I'm in control, and, and they just pounded into the base and lost everything. He was very meticulous, very patient, didn't want to get soaked into it, held off the harassment, and then just waited until the exact right moment. That's a different duck duck to the one we saw last season, isn't it? Yeah, he was aggressive, very in-your-face play style, and that was the way that he was able to win it. But what you just described is the exact same thing he needs to bring up against MMA. Be patient, deal with MMA's play style, the drops we're going to see, because we know MMA's a very fast-paced play, will try to exploit you. So take it calm, play it soft, play it easy, and then wait for the exact moment, and then strike. That's the way to beat MMA. All right, thank you very much, Apollo. Uh, let's get going, then, for game number three. Our winner's game, it's Duck Duck versus MMA. Let's go to our commentary team. Kolaris and Grubby, take it away.
Thanks very much, guys. Welcome to the commentary desk for what is sure to be a pretty cool series as we have Duck Duck and MMA fighting for that first round of eight spot. And I think we're in a position where we kind of expected to be in this group. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really want to predict too much going into this, mm. but now that we're here, uh, hindsight, but uh, it's, it's not yep. too unexpected. The two Koreans, both excellent MMA, very much on the up and up. And Duck Duck already proved himself last season. One of my most anticipated round of 16 matches, actually, between these. Even though there's no, like, oh, there's a European against a Korean story, chance of underdog and yeah, so on. But yeah. just some incredibly high-level StarCraft 2 play is what I expect to see. Uh, likewise. And this is, this is kind of odd, because this is a series that in Season 2, we could have actually seen. MMA was defeated by MC ah. in the round of four just before attaining the heights of the grand final to play against Duck Duck. So we just barely did not see this series, but now we get to, and that really shows the caliber of these players so high up in the rankings that it could have quite easily been a final. Yeah, that's true. They could have met in the final, and uh, it was a 3-1 victory for MC over MMA, and, it was. and that's where his story ended. So it's the matchup that hamstrung him last time. Will he have worked on that particularly much? I think so. Yeah. I think so. MMA now. I mean, he looked good in season two. Let's let's not lie. Uh, but after performing at Bucharest uh, and now coming into this season, I think it's a it's a little bit more of a different MMA. Of course, there was that ramp up in in uh, uh, back to form. But this is a good MMA. We're left with Yonsu, Frost, and Derelict. Yeah, it looks like uh, both of them removed the two maps that's best for the opponent's race, roughly. Yeah. Roughly, they're small preferential uh, variants, but uh, for the most part, pretty expected. Now, what's going to be the first map? We will know shortly. A kind smile by both of them, and suddenly in the game, they'll both be two little devils. Indeed, they're at each of the throats very, very soon here as MMA. Uh, you know, as as... Apollo said he's one of the favorites to win this all. You can't really discount Duck Duck either, though, because coming from a season two championship, that's pretty good. We're going to have Derelict Watcher, Yonsu, and then Frost. Why, what do you think about this map order? I'm very, I'm very excited to see this. I haven't ever seen a lot of PBTs on Yonsu yet. Mm. Don't know if we'll get to Frost. Derelict Watcher, I've seen a lot, and I'm not excited about it, really. No. I, mean, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really like the map. Uh, okay. But uh, for Terran, I would say it's a good map. That's very good. That, that's my bias for it. Uh, it's, it's a good map for Terran. But a fo like that is true for the first 14 minutes of the game, or yeah. the first 16 minutes of the game. That's usually when I lose to Korean Terrans already, <laughs> which is why. <laughs> Darn. But someone like Duck Duck, who, who is better and who can survive that time, suddenly, when you get to three versus three bases, and if you don't die, taking a fourth base for Terran is really, really hard. Because if it's a planetary fortress, two stalkers behind it can harass SCVs. If it's an orbital, well, send any unit there and he'll start messing with whatever's yeah. there. Zealots, DTs, and so on. Now, um, surviving the three versus three base situation, that's going to be a big challenge. Trend recently, Kalaris, you know it as well as anyone. Yes, just SCV a little bit. Viking pool. It seems to be a strong one. It really does. MMA is is the kind of player that does have that in his repertoire. But we've actually seen, you know, some pretty good macro games against Protoss as well from him uh, as of late. And uh, yeah, a lot of the play, a lot of the, you know, managers on Acer, etc., uh, can really testify to how well MMA is able to play out those big macro games, having a lot of ghosts in there, using cloak later on to really kind of mess around with his opponent's composition. Uh, so MMA, he's the full package of a Terran right now. Yeah. And Duck Duck, during season two finals uh, in uh, Gamescom, actually got obliterated by Tasia in the group stages. Um, and MMA is the kind of player that can still bring kind of that level of uh, TVP to the table as well, I feel. That is true. His, his style has been looking very similar to how Tasia has been playing. Quick cloak on those ghosts take control with Cloak Ghost and Sniping Observers. Yep. All right, guys, let's jump into game number one here between our two players looking to move on to the round of eight in first place as we have spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner our Red Terran representing Acer as well as Korea. Give it up for MMA. And up to the top right-hand corner here as our blue Protoss representing MVP as well as Korea. Give a quack quack for Duck Duck. <laughs> 
What is done is done. <laughs> what is done is done. <laughs> we will not look back. If I look back, I'm lost. Oh, indeed. That's true. You get lost and then you'll be in like a car park somewhere and you're like, uh, this isn't where I was supposed to be. I think it's, a, it's some kind of fantasy book or novel or, or show where they said, if I look back, I'm lost. But anyway, mm. I thought maybe you'll get the reference. Don, no, But then sorry. I don't remember what it's from either. Wait, this, <laughs> this was a bad idea. Back to StarCraft <laughs> 2 quotes. Back to StarCraft Hell. 2. <laughs> it's about time. Belay that order. <laughs> Where's the air support? So, no air support yet. <laughs> MMA going for command center first. Exceedingly common on, uh, on Derelict Watcher and something that has been exploited, I'm just trying to think here, by... Who was the Protoss in 4GG's group? Er, it's hard to put ourselves on the spot like that. When it was yesterday. It was Showtime, right? Yeah, the other one. The other one. <laughs> keep, keep it going and I'll just take a quick look. All right, Grubster. All right. Well, we have the command center first ah, going down genius. for MMA. It was genius. Yes. Genius, it was was ex genius was exploiting 4GG's known command center first by going for a Nexus first on Belcher Vestige, and then in the next game, he went for a gateway into Nexus without gas and cybernetics core. So Genius is someone who ex exploited known command center first. With Derelict being so common in command center first, DuckDuck is not reacting to it yet with a green... Ah, ha, ha, he is reacting. Yeah, uh, seemingly so. Uh, he's throwing down a pylon very close already. It's going to be a proxy Stargate. So he like is it. reacting to it. And there's two yeah. ways to react. You can run to the extremely greedy side, or you can run to the extremely aggressive side. And Duck Duck does like to do a bit of both. This time he rolled the dice. He said, what's in my fortune? And yeah. It's going to be a proxy Stargate. He likes the aggression. Now, the thing is, is MMA comes in here and counts. What does he count? He looks at the gas. He sees pylons. How many pylons? He sees only one pylon. Mm. He sees six probes in gas. He counts the gas. He says, that's a lot of gas mining. And he didn't see the cybernetic score spinning initially. Why wouldn't you have the 50 gas to put in the cybernetic uh, square? Maybe a very quick tech structure, perhaps. Yeah, and I don't think it's a... Uh... A second pylon. Wow. Yeah. He really doesn't want that underpowered. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes... And, and it's really close, Galaris. You can make it far away, but <laughs> I'm really liking this position. I, I never really thought of making it right behind the smoke screen here. Yeah, it's an ambitious spot, and it's actually, you know, it's going to hold up for a while here. He sees where the probe came from, though, the direction of yeah. it. Yeah. And now he was thinking of scouting with the SUV Marine, but he's thinking like, why bother? I know what yeah. it's going to be. I know there's going to be one or two pylons there powering it. I'm not going to be able to cancel it. Now the Oracle, very interestingly, is going to be right on top of the production facilities. Mm. MMA says, I don't have enough time to get an NG Bay and a turret. I'm going straight for a bunker in my mineral line. I like that. Yeah, I like that as well. Just trying to kind of shut it down where it's most useful. But at the same time, the Oracle could turn around and start focusing down Marines. And it's not going to be done on time. Oh, and that's annoying because tanking any SCV there, by the time it even gets to the bunker, it'll die. Uh, so he has to tr bring his Marines into here. And he's going to try and harass the natural. Smart Oracle movement instead of uh, contesting over that main base uh, goes right on here. Those four SCVs could potentially go into the bunker, but he's choosing to load it up with Marines. Oracle still has a little bit of energy, but now he's running out, and I bet he turned off his pulsar beam. Double gateway follow-up. Double gateway follow-up. Here comes the second Oracle. And the second wave of aggression by the looks of things is, you know, he could couple these Oracles up with... Uh, he can do two things. He could go for the very front with a load of gateway units and Oracles, or he could use the Oracles at the back for a while uh, and try and get some harassment done there. Very true. And he's also started a third Oracle. This is very, very aggressive here by by Duck Duck. There's 10 Marines on the field. 10 Marines easily beat two Oracles, which is kind of weird because one Oracle beats five Marines. But it's not, it doesn't scale that way. No, those Marines, they get extremely potent. Because yeah, uh -huh. they take out one of the Oracles in double shot. Yeah. Something like that. Very, very strong indeed. And oh, well, you don't have an expansion. You must be on three or four gateways. And yesterday we saw it with four gateways and double void ray from MC, actually two days ago. That took quite a while, but he's actually oh. going to break this first bunker down very, very quickly with that pulsar beam of those oracles. And he's actually just going to go to work wow. on the marines as well. And they disintegrate extremely fast with those stalkers there as well. Duck Duck with this crazy, crazy strong aggression early on is doing a number on MMA. Thanks for coming. See you next game. Yeah, that was uh, pretty quick and swift. <laughs> He's going to kill off these Marines and set on top of these production facilities, and now he has to pull all the SCVs once again. MMA would need a miracle, not only to save that tech lab, but to save this game. Yeah, that's protest for you sometimes. If, uh, if they proxy and they get their stuff up and they have the correct build against you, you're GG. too predictable. They will GG you. They'll make you GG really early. They make you GG.
Protoss makes you GG. <laughs> Words of advice from Grubby. Uh, really early. <laughs> really? Sometimes. Okay. If you didn't scout it and you're too predictable. Don't take it out of context. <laughs> sure, I shouldn't. You're right. I was already feeling magnanimous admitting that much about Protoss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, we uh, should get it right for SC2 quotes. That's, that's certainly right. Uh, All right. So anyway, <laughs> moving on to game number two. I guess clean slate from that one, you know. MMA knows what happened, he knows what was coming out of MMA, he just couldn't deal with it. Yeah. Well, he knew what was happening, but the, the pieces were already moving, the die was cast. Yeah. Uh, he had started with Command Center first on a map that's known for it, didn't scout for proxies, and of course, even if he did, maybe, maybe he's still loose. Maybe, maybe. It I mean, can happen. Hard to say. Hard yeah. to say. It's uh, it's a it's a tough tough thing to deal with. And uh, Duck Duck, we know from the previous season, his aggression is pretty good, uh, and he he knows when to utilize it as well. One thing that's great about Duck Duck, that I feel, is he knows when to throw something aggressive in. It's not just like, mm. nah, uh, I'm just gonna, this is aggressive build, I'm gonna go. Because yeah. you see games from him where he goes wildly economically focused as well. Yeah. So I feel that Duck Tuck has a really good sense of when to do things in a particular series. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. He couldn't have gotten that far with PvP just on mechanics. Yeah. It's, it's gotta be a lot of mind games in there. There were a lot of close series, though, for him in PvP in Season 2. True. It's true. Like 4 3, 3 2 yeah. against someone. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm proud <laughs> to be there. I, I mean, yeah, I, I certainly agree. That was a phenomenal finish. But now we move on to game number two here as we load up onto Yonsu for our second game and spawning up to the top right hand corner as our Red Terran representing Acer as well as Korea. Give it up for MMA. And down to the bottom left-hand corner, our blue Protoss representing MVP as well as Korea. Give it up for Duck Duck. Now, uh, subconsciously, players are always a little bit more ready for the build that they just faced. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make sense to counter last, uh, like last game's build. Yeah. With your <laughs> build now, if you do that, you'll always be exactly one step behind. But still, people are, people say, if you're going to do this twice in a row, I'm going to be more ready. Epic mind game to do it twice in a row anyway. Because yeah. almost no one ever does. Uh, in StarCraft, you learn the hard way that if you are predictable, you'll get countered. If DuckDuck did it again, it would be kind of funny. But as you see, MMA is not going Command Center first again. It's not really the map for it either. This is really a Reaper map. Oh, yes, very much so. Good opportunities to jump in, dance around. There's that small ledge to the left uh, back side of the base uh, that makes it a little bit easier to jump in as well. And the double gas has already gone down here for Dogbook. Yeah, triple chrono, everything looking normal, but uh, no early probe on the map. Yeah, no early proxy Stargate once again. That second pylon being in the base is a good indicator that we're not seeing as quick uh, a crazy aggression here from Duck Duck. Yeah, it always means something when you build your buildings on the wrong side of the map. Yeah, like, it does. <laughs> well, I thought this was my base. Well, okay, might as well mm. use them to attack with. Guess so, guess so. He thinks the whole map's his base. He's already thinking, ah, I've won this. I'll just expand everywhere. But the world is your playground. Mm. Oh, it was for Duck Duck in Season 2, gotta tell you that. Yeah. And, uh, well, he's looking to repeat that performance in Season 3. Um, but can he? He has to go through MMA first. He's already one game up uh, to advance onto the round of eight. MMA tweeting us, who wants Roast Duck? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't... <laughs> wow. Multitasking at its finest. It's completely not <laughs> conceivable that, uh, that this is not really a tweet from MMA. This, this, is, is, I mean, <laughs> this is legit, right? This, this has to be legit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly has to be. I don't think our production team's just like, haha, we'll replicate MMA and just be no, like... No, they would never do that, even if the boss, uh, like the product manager or something, he forced them to. Uh, no, probably not. No. Actually, no, Kenneth gets quite a scary guy, so maybe. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, Twilight Council for DuckDuck. Very early, 4.10. Mm. And that's after the SCV scouted him. And now we, we don't... Oh yeah, we see a Reaper. But the Reaper is fulfilling a defensive scouting position rather than, yeah. rather than seeing what's happening. Proxy is being scouted for it. As you see, people exactly. always subconsciously or consciously counter the build from last game a bit. He's being meticulous about his scouting in the middle of the map. And because of that, 
he's given his opponent more time to try and defend the Twilight Council, but uh, it's not going to matter anyway. Yeah. So in just in time. Now, if he had hey. Chrono boosted the Stalker, he might have been able to dissuade the Reaper from entering this deep. Yeah. But as it stands, Triple Gate, a Stalker, and Blink with Chrono has been shown. And it would I would be very hard pressed to pin this as um, as a as a mind game. And more so than uh, other games I've seen with Blink or Linz from Protoss, I actually really like the placement of the barracks here for MMA. That tech lab being where it is, uh, if he wants to actually go for uh, any yeah. researches or anything, it's going to be much easier to defend. But you're already not like ah uh, getting a siege tank. That's really really good against this Blink Stalker assault, I believe. I, I do think you're right. Uh, MMA doing it the right way. This one has to throw up a pylon. He throws up only one. Those Marines can take down this pylon if it weren't for the time warp. Yeah, and uh, that does slow down this assault somewhat of MMA. Uh, if he loses that pylon, it's it's really, really a significant slowdown, and I think he is going to lose it. The probe. I think there's another probe just moving into the middle of the map. Is it behind that stalker? Oh, yes, it is. the stalker's going to get warped in? No! Oh! That's a big, big deal. This is going to take a lot longer time here for Duck Duck to actually move forward. And again, there's going to be a second siege tank out, I feel, before yeah. this even hits. Yeah, and there was a supply block for Duck Duck. Now, for the new StarCraft players out there, seeing those stalkers die in such dramatic fashion mid warp. Oh! Okay, bye bye. They don't really die, the warp ins. Yeah, you yeah. get back the money, it didn't cost you anything, there isn't even a percentage of loss. It's just like a failed training, it doesn't cost you money. That stalker that died to the tank. Very real. <laughs> Very real, yeah. Very real. Uh, and he figured that out as soon as he got completely blasted into oblivion. Um, unfortunately for that stalker. But now, MMA's defenses are set up nicely. He's gonna have, well, he's getting a third siege tank. Yeah. These marines are so well positioned to defend the, uh, Siege tanks as well. Normally, you would. Well, I guess full confirmation of what's going on. But normally, you would try against this to, you know, try and wiggle around, maybe find a, a siege tank where you could to kill it off with a blink, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you can't here. This is so well positioned. This is a nucleus base build. MMA identifying the possible threats on this map, like a lot of space to blink in. And he's got the nucleus base build. Boom, 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 boom. Stalkers are shooting. And there goes the first stalkers. And boom, oh, that was a big hit. That really was. Resources lost 1,100 to 400 right now in favor of MMA. Pro production has begun again here for Duck Duck. But any transitioning off of this Maybe. is going to be hard. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to transition for him. this. There's really no synergy to be gotten for Duck Duck. He's just going to try and make a Nexus. And then, I don't know. And the probe is at the wrong Nexus. <laughs> What's he going to do? <laughs> He's going to expand up there and be happy. But uh, maybe he was going to expand there and try and trick out his opponent to thinking that oh. there was no expansion down on the natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the probe was spotted. Yeah, exactly. And, and you might think, OK, the natural can get siege from the, the third base, like from the low ground. Mm. But then this one is even more fragile <laughs> to siege tank fire from the from like below like the third base. If you look right above there, place yeah. tanks there, you can shoot the mineral line. Especially when you lose more stalkers and thus cannot really defend it so easily. Four Zane take notes. He got, he got blunk by uh, MC and uh, didn't have siege tanks. Duck Duck tried the same build more or less, but MMA saw it coming for a long time. And, and this army is just going to do a lot of damage. I, I mean, there's not a whole lot he has to his name. He has five stalks and four sentries. Uh, trying to get a robo up to try and get immortals out to tank all of this damage against tanks. Yeah. That was the worst sentence of all time, but... <laughs> uh, I followed it. Yeah, it. I heard immortals, tanks. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> and it's the, same, <laughs> it's the same thing. Anyone who's behind their computer now and they've got StarCraft open, go ahead and press F12 in StarCraft, mm -hmm. click on the tank, and it says... Natural counter is immortal. Does that right? help file has really helped me in a lot of tight situations. Yeah. Very useful. I remember using it on your stream sometime just to check mid game. Yeah. What was uh, a counter to what? Yeah. Tanks <laughs> countered by immortals. And he's going straight for Colossi, which I feel might not quite hit the mark. No. Uh, another stalker going uh. down. Losses he can ill afford, Kalaris. The acrobatic stalker falls down dramatically. And, you know, with that, it, this army is looking so strong. He is supply blocked. That's one thing that was going in Duck Duck's favor for a second to try and keep him stabilized. And he killed a Marine. He, he, at the tower. he got a Marine. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is still really going to be hard. He's trying to set up, like, what seems like, you know, a flank from both sides, trying yeah. to shut this down. But and MMA kind of feels that, so I really appreciate what Duck Duck is doing here. He's shown himself in two to three different locations. Mm -hmm. And because of that, MMA says, 
They're like, I don't want to start a base trade just yet. I haven't stabilized enough yet. No combat shield. Like, he could probably do it and get away with it, but he's playing it safe. Yeah. Just like Duck Duck was against the Titan with an advantage. So he moved back his army. Still probably in a huge advantage. But Duck Duck, if he can get time, he'd rather have that than dying immediately. Yeah. Army supplies 54 to 35. And Duck Duck's hope is to try and transition onto Colossi as quickly as he can do. Can't even afford Thermal Lance at this point, uh, realistically, to shut this down. Those rocks are going to uh, have to help out. Should have killed you when I had the chance. <laughs> Duck Duck says to the rocks. Well, they're gonna they're just gonna sit around and not do too much whilst now MMA wails away at this base that is closer to his opponent and this is gonna be hard to defend. How about Duck Duck puts Photon Overcharge on the Nexus and uses it to kill the rocks? It's in range. <laughs> he could do that. Um and well, hold the phone. We need to see. Oh no, he's not gonna catch those units just yet. I think if a siege tank is immobilized at the bottom of that, nice force fields catch two marauders. Oh, uh, but one. no. And blinks forwards to catch off the rest again. But Siege Tank's being immobilized under that rocks. I think they it die. does damage to it. Yeah, they die. You have to be, uh, yeah, a unit has to be immobilized under the rocks. Right, that's that's correct. And, uh, well, when you're behind... Dark Shrine. Des Why not? Desperation Templars incoming. 50% to certain victory. No, not quite. Dark <laughs> Templars, they may do something. But... It's ambitious. <laughs> yeah, it's something. It is. He's going to try and work on the rocks again. The infamous rocks that he needs oh. to break down. Oh, nice force fields. We'll catch a little bit of the army. And the Colossus is going to reinforce this. Uh, so <laughs> it killed a Marine. It killed a Marine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Congratulations for killing that Marine that was stuck by the force fields. Blinks forwards actually kills off a siege tank. Not too bad. Where are the other siege tanks? Yeah, where is everything? They all died. No. There's, oh, did the rocks kill the siege tanks? Did mm. we... Can we get a replay? Okay, uh, later, later. Let's get a replay. <laughs> That's, I, I don't really know how that happened, really, but there's still a huge bio force here. Maybe they were under the force fields. But anyway, uh, that being said, these zealots are going to try and hold on with this uh, Colossus as well as the Immortal, but that's so much bio. Again, MMA throughout this entire game long, even without the Siege Tanks, has had such a good advantage with his army, picks up, chases down the second Colossus without Thermal Lance, making it even harder for Duck Duck to kite it. Yeah, and uh, small amounts of Marauders against small amounts of Colossus do absolutely great against it. There go the DT, and they're currently unscouted. These DTs are killing a lot of units, and if this Nexus survives, is there a tiny chance for Duck Duck, maybe? I mean, probably not, but mm, still, yeah. nice defense by Duck Duck. Uh, it's a tough time when your incomplete infrastructure is being sieged up. These units at the front as well have been spotted, but the scan instantly, as the DTs start warping in, just to make sure that he's going to kill them off. And those pylons going down. It's going to mean lights out here for Duck Duck. GG. Game at number two goes to MMA. And the game really was lost at around the four minute, 50 second mark. Yeah. With, when... <laughs> with the skill, the knowledge of counters that MMA has, once he saw three to four gates and Twilight Council spinning for Blink, he had the setup necessary to start making tanks. And there was no way he was going to lose to it. So. Maybe Duck Duck could have said, like, okay, I've I gotten this scouted, I'm playing against the factory opening, I don't think he knew. Oh, no, no, the stalker moved in. And if he had at that very moment said, I know you're an extremely competent player, you know the counter, maybe he didn't know that, okay? But yeah. let's say if he knew that, then he could have potentially said, okay, I'm going to expand now and pretend I'm doing a blink all in. Hope you are very defensive, continue for a while, and straight away go to Immortals and, and charge or whatever. Mm. But with the amount of stalkers that he produced early game, it was game loss already. There was no way he could kill that amount of Marines and tanks there in defensive position. That's very true. Our third map is going to be Frost. And if we just briefly come back to game number two again, I'm pretty sure that the siege tanks were under the force fields yeah. on those rocks. So yeah. they were like double isolated. They were inside force fields and in siege mode. Like, yeah. just, I can't, uh, but so that was that was kind of weird, yeah. uh, but it was it was cool of Doug to try and break down those rocks at that particular time. Did what he could. Yeah, did what he could did with what, what he, he could. had. Reminds me a lot of uh, the Land Before Time. Yes, it's this dinosaur cartoon <gasps> from uh, I know, I know, our young years. It yeah. was good. Uh, at some point, the friendly little dinosaurs they throw a rock on the T Rex's head and as he's climbing up the rocks. Yeah, in, yeah, in, in, at the water. Yeah, and then it goes lights out for the T Rex. Aww. That's what D Duck Duck tried to do, but well, T Rex. It's too strong. <laughs> MMA the T-Rex. MMA the T-Rex, man. He gets the job done. And Willie in game number three. Both of these players want to move on in first place in this group. Onto the round of eight. As you guarantee yourself not only a spot there, a spot in Premier in season four, 
uh, in 2014, and you guarantee yourself a second place finisher you fight against in the round of eight. Nice, nice little things. Oh, uh, yeah. But now, as we have spawning down to the bottom right hand corner, our Red Terran representing Acer as well as Korea. Give it up for MMA. And up to the top right, our reigning WCS Europe champion as the blue Protoss representing MVP in Korea. Give it up for Duck Duck. Now, as you mentioned, if you win this group, you're guaranteed to face in the round of eight, in the quarterfinals, next week, 5 and 6 October, mm -hmm. you're guaranteed to face a second placer. Yes. The second placers we have in group A, B, and C are Stardust, MC and Nurture. <laughs> so are you truly more happy to face a second place than, than a first? The yeah. first places are Targa, Vortex and Genius. Also very good, but I would say it's very comparable, the skill between yeah. all these. You could make the argument that second place finishers have had more proven of themselves in the past than our first place finishers have. Yeah, each of the each of the second placers have won at least one tournament. Yeah. And on average, if you average them, MC, Nerd, Cho, and Stardust, they've won like on average, I don't know, four or five tournaments each. Hundreds, hundreds of tournaments. On average, hundreds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one thing we can say: there's two Protoss and a Zerg on second place, mm -hmm. and there's two Zergs and a Protoss in first place. So if you like Protoss Mirror, you should get first in this group. Mm. And Duck Duck, off the back of PvP, has done very well in Season 2 winning it. So he certainly wouldn't mind winning. And then, of course, there's the argument to be said that if you win now, you're through. And if you lose now, you still have to fight for it. Hey. So it's a pretty compelling argument, too. Yeah, you kind of just want to get through and kind of <laughs> get what you're given, I guess, at the very yeah. end. It's like, no, I, liked, I like Starka so much, I want to play all the series. That's me, usually. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be choosy about these things, Grubby. You can't right. be picky. Thanks, Galaris. All right. I'll try to do my best in every series from now on. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what I expect of you, Grubby. Thanks. <laughs> well, OK, let's get to this game. Frost, as I said, is our map. We have a pretty standard opening. It was Command Center first for MMA, right? Into two yeah, barracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have a poet here on Twitter, Mr. Einfan. The Duck defeated the Titan. Can he defeat Legend? Thank you, uh, mm. Shakespeare. What would you... Okay, here's a question. What would you rather do? Would you rather fight one Titan-sized duck or <laughs> a thousand duck-sized titans? <laughs> is, that's the question. What does it, is, doesn't a titan mean something very big? So how can you have duck-sized titans? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, no, okay. Or is like a titan, like a titan-sized kind of duck, that's the one. A dog? Like a dog. What about a dog-sized duck? A dog-sized duck. That would be scary, I'll tell you. I mean... I would run. Yeah, the little bills that nip you? No, a dog-sized duck. A dog-sized duck. I'm getting so confused That'll right be now. like <laughs> twice as big as a duck is. That's a pretty big duck. Command Center first for Duck Duck, and he's got his robotics facility started at a very normal time. Maybe a little bit earlier than normally, but there goes the forge. This is the, the most safe build that a Protoss can do. Now, he hasn't scouted any of the starting locations. All he's done is take presence on the Zanaga Watchtowers. And the cool thing about that is that when you scout around the map, clockwise, counterclockwise, doesn't matter, sooner or later you're going to pass the Zonaga Tower. So maybe Duck Duck can deduce where the opponent is based on uh, that SCV movement. So, Forge is ready, can start armor upgrade, and he's got the Forge potentially for cannons. Very aggressive move out here by, uh, by the Marines. Nice control there by Stalkers. Didn't yeah. take much damage. One probe goes down, a second probe will go down before the... But he no. does lose all the Marines in the end. Yeah, five Marines for a probe hmm. is not a good trade. It's interesting, because normally you see these kinds of poke counts from Terran after a barracks opening, and then they poke out and they try and force that, uh, you know, the, the Photon Overcharge from the Nexus, and that's all good. But from a Command Center first, I don't think that works out too well, generally. Yeah, a lot of people do it, actually, surprisingly. Hmm. Uh, five, six Marines. If someone goes for an early sentry, for example, if you're doing an Immortal Bust or you just like getting an early sentry for Guardian Shield or Hallucination, that kind of five Marine attack kills a sentry, kills two, three probes, maybe activates a Photon Overcharge and kills nothing. Now he lost all that because Duck Duck was playing very safe. Three Stalkers. 
Now, MMA was going for another push out with like nine Marines, but the observer saw it and he said, well, if you're going to kite me all the way back home, yeah, I'd rather not really. Now with Duck Duck, I think the third Nexus he's building now is reactive. I think he said, you're probably on command center first. Argument one, mm -hmm. this map is very good for command center two, uh, first. Yeah. Argument two, you did that Marine push out and you didn't seem all too bothered losing those Marines. Yeah. Maybe you're on a really good economy with good production, command center first. Because if you want to do like a Marine, Hellion, Medivac, Riddleman attack, you don't want to lose five Marines for free. So he said, I can go for a third Nexus. To make that decision so quickly, after killing those Marines, he had a small early game advantage to killing those yeah, Marines. Yeah. It, uh, that's really good. And we saw this against Titan, where he took a very quick third too. Decisions like this are decisions that foreigners don't make as easily oftentimes. Yeah. Because of lack of game knowledge. We have excellent game knowledge in the grand scheme of things, but compared, Duck Duck is still a little bit better for the most part, and uh, that was a really good decision by him. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be very hard for his opponent to ever, ever punish here. I mean, MMA, yes, he will have a strong standing army, but by the time he wants to move out, there's already going to be at least one Colossus out on the field. Yeah. Um, and that is going to make it a little bit harder. He's not getting thermal answers as quick, uh, as quick as one would imagine with Colossi, so he might even just go straight over from the Twilight Council to Templar Archives with just one Colossus in hand, but that would be kind of scary on three Nexus yeah. that, that quickly. Yeah, I, 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 you're right, that definitely can happen, and it's something that has been popular for a very long time, but in this particular case, I think he's just omitting it because defensive Colossus spread around your bases, Thermal Lance isn't as important. You need it for big fights and you need it for attacks, but you don't really need... Oh, the oh. Observer survived. He's going to have to expand the scan or let it go. That's a go. I was just saying, uh, you don't need Thermal Lance as fast defensively, so you'd rather get the Blink, the, the Double Forge going and more Colossi because you don't have the gas yet. You can just get it in anticipation of a big fight later. Well, again, his production is going to be sitting very, very nicely. He does not know about the third base just yet, does MMA. He'll send a Marine up there to scout it out, and now uh, we'll end up spotting... Oh, unless that Marine dies off before... No, he stims, he knows, he, he absolutely has to stim and see that, and he does. Very important, but at the same time, force field's in the middle. Cuts the Sami off for a sec. Three force fields, one used stim, and only killing about two to three Marines. Not a very good trade for Duck Duck there, but let's take a look at Duck Duck's vision. He's got four observers on the map. Really good vision. He sees one in the main, he sees everything moving out of the natural, there's one over the bridge. He sees the medevac going into the natural now if he's paying attention, and there's one more in the big open space in the middle, so he can spread his units properly. Blink is already finished, so MMA has to be careful. It's almost like these drops might be at quite a big risk. The mixing of the, of the Immortals with that Templar Archives going down now makes Duck Duck's eventual army extremely potent if he can get to it. Uh, but he is already spreading his units nicely, as you said. And hey, this is ah, this is cute. I, I like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> we both <Go> like it. <laughs> it's nice just to stop, you know, Zealot Rumbys uh, from that location. Uh, and it will give him forewarning. I mean, I'd rather lose a Supply Depot or two than 10 SCVs. I'd rather day. lose 10 SCVs. Really? If oh, okay. I wanted to die. No. Oh, yeah, but no. I don't. So no. the, the Depot is a much better choice. Blink Stalker's going up into two Medivacs worth of units. That's not a good idea. He can't kill anything. Goes back. will lose the pylon if he doesn't cancel it. But still, units lost stab is a very important stat to look at. It certainly is, and MMA has even things up a little bit in that regard, uh, with resources lost of 575 to 800. It was previously 800 to 50. So those previous engagements just then were extremely cost-effective for MMA. Yeah. Now, MMA is gearing up for a second starport. We don't see a Ghost Academy yet. So it's just second starport, Vikings, and could we be seeing the dreaded Viking pool? Or does MMA say, I want to go into the late game? Because I'm, I'm not sure it's going to work this time, the Viking pool. There's Archons, there's good upgrades. Duck Duck is actually ahead in supply. That's really uncommon. Yeah, it is. It's thank all thanks to that early third Nexus, right? Yeah, the yeah. fact that he had so much economy to fuel that. Uh, th uh, even that being said, though, the fact that the upgrades so far here for Duck Duck, he's going for mech weapons. Yeah, so that's for, oh. Uh, is he going to mix in Hellbats with I this? I think he meant that for the Vikings. Yeah, Polaris. I think he meant that for the Vikings as well. Wow. Because or he thinks that the new that this is the new pa uh, patch <laughs> test map. It's going to be a while before that. Uh. <laughs> well, these four medevacs heading up to the top left-hand corner here. 
This could come back to sting MMA if his Vikings aren't as potent as they once were. Yeah. Let's let's oh, just we have mentioned it now once. Let's not bring it up again yeah. until Apollo at the analysis desk. But because uh, <laughs> it's it's like we don't really need to spend much more time on it. But it may come back to haunt him. Okay, back to the game. We've got equal upgrades for now, but Duck Duck is finishing a number of upgrades soon. Really on top of everything. This is a four medivac Doom drop, and the zealots are there. Not a lot of zealots, but it discourages them. And uh, High Templar's not far behind. MMA can't find a hole in the defenses. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice blink. Oh, will he get one? Yes, he will. Very nice snipe out there by Duck Duck here in game number three. And actually, now that I say that, you got to remember, it is game number three. Duck yeah. Duck is in a great position here to continue on forwards. Look at his army supply uh, here. 123 to 104. Yeah. And the upgrades are lining up here for Duck Duck. Yeah, very good probe count for Duck Duck. He's at 66. So he gets the maximum army on max out. And this small contingent of forces going to head into that third base. It is left a little bit vulnerable, but at the same time, the army for Duck Duck doesn't have any high Templars in it. A nice snipe out here, though, from MMA if he's able to get that Nexus. Yeah. And it looks like he will end up doing so. MMA finds the first hole in the defenses this game, but that's only because Duck Duck is letting him because he's got bigger things on his mind. Oh. He is dreaming big here. He's dreaming of a victory, and Nexus doesn't need to feature in his plans necessarily. Ghosts are out, though, uh -oh. and he's walking into a meat grinder. Good EMPs might spell disaster for Duck Duck here. We're getting a weird base trade scenario again, but at the same time, well, Duck Duck has to be careful. He doesn't want all these EMPs to hit him. He's lost all of his Colossi at the front. Uh, well, actually, no, he moved those back. Uh, so he's he's kept those. He's retained them. He's moving back for now. But the MMA is doing a lot of damage with this drop. Wow. Actually, Duck Duck is forced to go back. And that's... he's going to lose another Nexus, for sure. Uh-oh. This means that's this is all the army is going to have if that Nexus goes down, and it does. MMA! Oh wow, this game has completely turned on its head. Duck Duck looks in a great position, but now MMA with that, Duck Duck's being forced to double re-expand because he knows he can't break his opponent's army with what he's currently got. Wow, Duck Duck trying to flip, flip the kill switch there. He was maxed out, he had two, three upgrades, he had a fantastic army, no storm yet. And the no storm part is really what haunted him. Yes. Oh, yes. Because if you want to get supply efficient with defenses, what do you need, Galaris? You need big, big AOE. And uh, the storm is the the size storm from the High Templar is the most supply efficient defense that you can get. It's no good leaving Archons or Colossi at home. And because Duck because Duck, Duck skipped storm, that's why his army was so big. And once it was maxed, he couldn't really get his army any better. And because he skipped storm. He couldn't really attack as well against a very smart and prepared opponent. MMA played that out really nicely. We thought that Duck Duck was going to crush, but MMA finding that first hole in the defenses put himself in a very, very nice lead. Good defenses, mm. and now he is the aggressor. And MMA knows he has an advantage. Nice blinks from Duck Duck to try and focus down some of these Vikings. They are already working on one of the Colossi, though, and that will end up falling. Only one Colossus left. And if that goes down in this army, that's a lot of AoE that is now missing from this. Even the Archon has to come back. But the Vikings, they've now done their job. MMA is marching on. Oh, he's maxed out. Duck Duck is in full retreat, 150 supply. No side storm to help against the masses of MMA's army, so his full army can come to justice here, uh, can do a good job. The ghost in front, they don't have cloak yet, but uh, they're EMPing everything, and Duck Duck's army is being annihilated. Yeah, those Archons absolutely disintegrate under those EMPs, along with Bio finishing them off as well. MMA is on the warpath. GG! And MMA advances on in first place here to the round of eight, defeating Duck Duck 2-1. MMA, congratulations. You are the first and only Terran in the WCS Europe round of eight. And Duck Duck, you're going to have to do things the hard way yeah. through the final match here against the winner of Starbuck versus Titan. He certainly is. And uh, that's not where Duck Duck wants to be at all. After a great performance in season two, uh, that is certainly not where he wants to be. But this man, MMA, being able to advance on as that only Terran, as you rightly pointed out, that's an impressive finish for him. Uh, and a lot of uh, hope was resting on his shoulders for Terran Kind. And he's certainly done well. Very pleased with his result there. Yeah. Well, nice job by him. And uh, Team Acer gets a player into round of eight. Duck Duck will go the hard way. And uh, yeah, now MMA will be facing one of Nurcho, MC, and Stardust. Now, Kolaris, I should probably know this, but uh, you're going to know even better. 
Are the drawings tonight for the round of eight? Yes, they are. They are right after uh, the final series uh, with our wrap-up. So I love these things, man. Yeah. Like the round of 32 to the round of 16 drawings that we do those in the studio. And then uh, drawing the round of eight is always a lot of fun as well. So guys, we can go over to an interview with our first place finisher with from Group D, Mr. Acer MMA. Congratulations, MMA. Uh, fantastic comeback as well after that second map. Uh, it seemed to go a little bit wrong and there's a little bit of cheese there maybe from Duck Duck. I don't know. Maybe I think he does understand the word cheese as well. Uh, so talk us through map one. What, was your, what were your thoughts going into map one against Duck Duck? Mm, so I scouted a lot to uh, find uh, what is built, built is and uh, I actually thought about uh, oracles but uh, the initial push came at a different timing than I expected so I kind of lost like very easily to him. Okay, and then uh, the, the third map, um, it looked for a while that you, you were trying to come in on that top side, around the 12 o'clock side, continually trying to get away at that third nexus. He then committed a full army when he was 200-200 down to yours, and then suddenly you were able to take, take down two nexus. Was that always the plan for you, or were you, were you just a little bit lucky there with the way that he pushed on to you? Mm. そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そ
if we look at it as well here, is that these Marines only got a single probe kill and they lost their lives. And this is just a bad start and a bit of a mistake from MMA. So as we can see, the micro is very good from the Stalkers and the Mothership Corps. He gets one probe and then that's it. From this position, that's five Marines, which should be usually pressuring. They're obviously going to be used later on once they go back, because those Marines are usually used, if you remember, for the photon overcharge later on. So from this position, there's another squad of Marines, which see the Observer, and more importantly, the Observer sees them. So again, MMA can't really go out, can't do anything, because he'd probably lose those Marines as well, if they weren't there to surprise Duck Duck, which they weren't. So if we pause it from this position, We've had two moves in this game. Both of them have done nothing. One hurt MMA, and the second one was cancelled because it was spotted. Duck Duck says, all right, well, you're not playing so well this game. You've already lost a lot. Let me punish you. And it's an indirect punish. It's not like, let me come and kill you. It's more, I'm going to take a third Nexus. And because you've lost Marines already, you didn't want to come out with a second squad because you know I saw them coming. And then to remember that there was at least two Stalkers what can he do with a handful of Marines? Nothing. So Duck Duck responds in the best way possible. So from this point onwards, we can fast forward it through because MMA doesn't look to gather any more information for quite a long time in this game. And he just builds up his uh, you know, infrastructure, the barracks, the command center. And eventually, he moves out. And eventually, he spots the third Nexus. But there's one important upgrade which is missing which hurts him for a lot of this game, which is the combat shields. He never researched it, and it was a mistake for the majority of this game. So finally, I think at this point, he's found out about the third Nexus. So if we pause it from here, MMA now knows, darn it, you've taken a third Nexus. Well done, good move. And now MMA needs to find a way to crack open his opponent, because if he doesn't, then with a third Nexus means better upgrades, faster economy, faster army, because he's going to have much more to spend on warp gates. So what ends up happening from this point is MMA attempts Keyword attempts to break down Duck Duck. So if we fast forward it from here again, every attempt fails. <laughs> every attempt fails. Here he comes up, doesn't have combat shields. To be honest, if you had combat shields, attempting becomes a lot easier than normal because he'd be able to do more damage or survive, therefore deal more damage. But unfortunately for him, that's not the case until one big point, which almost cost him the game, by the way. So he decides, and this is a desperation move, I need something. I need something, he says. So he decides to load four medivacs, aims for the main, and to be honest, this could have cost him the entire game. But luckily, he only lost one of the four medivacs. Pause it for a second. Right south, high tempo. If they got feedbacks, stalkers came up north, game over. Lose the medivacs, lose the game. Look how, how many or how much energy the medivacs have. Game over. It's that simple. You can't lose these units. So luckily, he escapes with three out of four as you see. But then all of a sudden, Duck Duck says, that's enough. I've had, I want to go attack you. From this point on, the game just goes for Duck Duck. Because what ends up happening is those three medivacs are still alive. And it's like you forgot about them. Pause it for a second here as well. 193 supply to 198. He can warp in two zealots. I mean, well, two Zealots, it was three if you had another pylon, which isn't complete. A two Zealots going to defend against all that when there's no units left? Classic mistake. Never move out without leaving some units behind. Cannons aren't enough. So if we pause it from here, MMA comes crashing through. Cannons down to the Nexus. Those two Zealots, useless. And now the Nexus is dead. So all of a sudden, Duck Duck is pushed into a position he never wanted to be in, where he has to attack to kill. MMA, best response ever. If we look down here, evacuates his third base, says, all right, all I need to do is defend and I win. I've killed his third Nexus, my command sentence can float, your Nexus can't. He actually uh, does this really well. He says, come up, come on, come kill me. I'm waiting, I've got EMPs, I've got the high ground advantage, I've got a good spread of units, you will die if you attack up here. And Duck Duck realizes that, but it's too late. He comes back with his entire army, but it's too late. He's going to lose everything to this drop. He loses a second Nexus. And then if we fast forward it from here, this is where MMA basically said, if I defend, I will win. Did he defend? Yes, he did. And oh boy, did he. And from this position, the economy is terrible. The third command center lands again, so it's now three base versus one. And Duck Duck, who was in superior position and was really looking to win this game, went from hero to zero. And then from this point, there's no high Templars, there's no Storms, the, Vedivac, uh, the Vikings chase down the Colossus, and this is game over. 
classic mistake from uh, Duck Duck, but a very good game here from uh, MMA. Noticeably, both players capitalize on each other's mistakes. StarCraft can be a brutal game sometimes. All right, guys, thanks for listening. This has been some analysis. Now let's head over to Red Eye. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, breakdown of game number three, game number four, coming very shortly your way. So stay tuned to WCS. Round of 16, Premier League season number three. We are coming to a close of round of 16. We have just two more games to go with three players vying for one spot in the quarterfinals. Don't forget that quarterfinals takes place next weekend, the 5th and 6th of October. Your host for that one will be in control, basically because Red Eye's sister is greater than 9,000 and therefore owns eSports. Or she may just be ruining it, I'm not sure. But anyway, she's getting married and I can't be here. So In Control will be your host next week, which I'm really looking forward to, as I'll definitely be tuning in during the wedding. Anyway, keep those tweets coming. Make sure you like us on Facebook as well. Facebook.com forward slash StarCraft. And make sure you're following the official StarCraft channel, at StarCraft on Twitter. Your tweets keep coming. Make sure you use the hashtag, hash WCS. We'll be right back with game number four. It's the Battle of Europe. Who goes through to face Duck Duck? <laughs>